Okay, from the web .xml, uh, it basically goes to your dispatcher server, right? So you can have any name to it. So basically, you uh, give uh, any name uh, depending on your application. Okay, uh, there is no restrictions out here, right? Now and and moreover, we basically spoke about uh, all sort of configurations. The configuration we did, like uh, from here, we spoke. I mean, we went and hit to the controller, right? Now uh, there is other way out. We can even use annotations uh, with the help of annotations. Also, we can do that. So let us see uh, how to use annotations first, right? Okay. So in order to use annotations, uh, the very first and foremost thing is we have to use the context component scan, right? If you remember, uh, we spoke about in this in, in spring core itself right so uh, my my controllers are basically somewhere in my com.tutorial.controllers okay so these are the bunch of controllers we are just show you one by one so as of now let me uh, remove all the other things which are not required for me so remove this and okay remove this till here okay and i'm just going to uncomment this and comment this. All right. So let us go back and see uh, how my annotations, how, how my annotation behaves. Okay. Uh, so first, let us go back to the index code.jsp. And if you see in the index code.jsp, uh, these these all things we have already discussed. Now let us discuss about this one. Okay. Now again, we have got href hello world.htm. All right. So when you say hello world.htm, basically uh, hello controller, sorry, hello world. Right. If you see here, on this particular class, it is I'm not extending anything. I'm not doing anything as such. I'm just annotating this particular controller as at the rate controller. Okay. And this at the rate controller is again given by your Spring itself. Right. So if you see, it is coming under your Spring context. Uh, if you okay, if you want to see uh, a particular class belongs to which particular jar file. Just highlight this and just say Control Shift T. When you say Control Shift T, it basically opens a pop-up wherein the name of the class file will be present here, or 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 your interface or whatever it is. And at the bottom, you can see here which to which jar file it belongs to. Okay, so this belongs to your con uh, Spring hyphen context dot jar file. Right. The only one annotation which I'm giving here that is your uh, thread controller, and on top of that, for each method, I'm giving a Annotation again saying that this is my request uh, request mapping that is a hello world, okay? And my request mapping is a by world. Sorry, okay, it is by world. So here, what happens? This acts as a controller, and the the methods, all these methods that is a hello world and by world, which basically acts as a service method for us. Okay. So let us go back and see that. Uh, okay, this is a welcome hello controller, hello controller. Okay. So let me first run the let me just close all the things for now. Okay. So let us go to the index code.jsp and see this. All right. Let me just run this program. And if you see that in my dispatcher survey.xml, I'm just using my context component scan here. All right. So let me run this program. Right click, run as, run on server. So what happens the moment your uh, server gets started up, right? You know, uh, we have spoken that yesterday. Things get loaded up automatically in the Spring container itself. Okay. Now, as of now, uh, these things will not work out because uh, we have disabled all these things. Uh, if you go back to your index code.jsp, as we do not have any configurations as such in the dispatcher servlet, right? So we have commented out everything. Now the other thing out, if you go uh, go back and click on this, if you see at the bottom, the 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 complete URL is Spring MVC slash Hello World dot HTM. Okay, the moment I click on this, you see I go to your go to a page that is your I am in Hello World with a message. I'm not giving any message anything out here. Okay, but ultimately what happens? It goes and scans. Already the scanning has been done and all the components are present in your Spring container. The only thing is it goes to your where to your controller and it gives the message accordingly. Now, what is the written type? The written type is written is hello. Now, where is hello present? This is your hello.jsp. Now, where is the hello.jsp present? 
we have already seen that how we have done it using my using the view resolver okay now very simple uh, the only thing is you have to return a string out here but if in in the previous examples we used to return your model and view okay and in that model and view we used to give the the view as well as the model data correct so if i just quickly open that uh, if you see here if i just copy this and paste it out here right so very simple it's almost the same the only thing is uh, this is a different way of approach and uh, in that case also in in the previous example what we saw in that we used to return a model and view which is my model this is my model and this is my view okay and here the approach is slightly different i'm just saying uh, the different type of this particular method is your print welcome it takes some uh, takes a model okay and it basically takes a model as an argument and in that model i'm just saying model dot add attribute of message and spring 3 mvc hello world okay usually what happens in your previous applications uh, we basically copied this one and pasted it out here itself okay but here explicitly i'm saying i have a model in that model add the attribute if you remember if you guys remember the uh, jsp is a servlet you say request dot set attribute right and then in the jsp you say request dot get attribute right so the same thing out here it is model dot add attribute okay it is kind of a map which takes a key and a value value will be your any kind of model it could be a list or anything as such okay and then ultimately it, it, it returns you a view so that view we have already seen that how to resolve it using your view resolver okay and uh, hello dot jsp and okay let us go back all right okay so i am in hello world with message i think i'm not uh, displaying the message out here no hang on this will be some other page give me a sec folks okay so this is your message sorry okay all right so it basically goes to which place uh, let me just put a debug point out here it is not not in this page this is what we didn't add up we basically wanted to see the hello world controller okay so this is our page basically so if you see here uh, in our jsp uh, in your index code dot jsp we are giving a href as hello world dot htm so ultimately what happens it goes and finds a controller with a particular mapping out here okay so this i have already uh, given an annotation as controller here at the rate uh, controller here so as of uh, as a result this acts as a controller and you have got request mapping here and you are given a url pattern here okay so depending on that you can even invoke your by world also if you see here there is go back there is a by world also click on this you come with this output okay so even for your uh, hello world or by world both comes to the same controller okay there is your hello world controller but different methods have been invoked right so this is pretty much simple and if you see here uh, okay this is your i'm in this case i'm returning your model and view and the other way out if you see in the previous example uh, sorry i mean i opened the other one uh, wrongly okay in this case i'm just saying model and return a view okay but in this case i am saying return new model and view so you can take any of the approaches in order to work with your application okay if you see here closely in a, in in this application it returns a string but in this application it returns a model and a view and how do you what do you say you say when you say model and a view you return a model and view class which in which you pass the view and the model and in this application you say the the argument for this particular method is nothing but a model and you just pass all this information to it okay pretty much simple i mean if you compare uh, your previous applications it's almost pretty much same okay the only the way you approach is different all right based on the url how do we go to the correct controller when annotations are used okay based on the url how do we go to the correct controller right i mean if you see here uh, automatically you are saying the request mapping for this particular method is your hello world okay so i can so automatically what happens 
this acts as a controller no doubt and as well as this particular method is being annotated completely okay as as a result what happens it directly goes and invokes so this comes in the context so that whenever you invoke any of the uh, any of the submit or form action anything as such it directly comes to this particular method okay the only thing is you have to annotate this particular method with hello world so depending on this annotation okay a request mapping it goes and hits this particular servlet sorry particular controller here okay all right so this we have already seen yesterday uh, this hello controller all right okay so let us see this um, there's one more example i'm basically annotating the controller as request mapping okay and then i am having a value as goodbye and i am not having a value here okay so let me just open this and open the index code.jsp i am basically saying if you see here i am just saying anchor href equals href equals to welcome.htm and here i am just saying welcome slash goodbye.htm all right so there are two ways again uh, if you see here let us go back uh, to your let me close this let me close this also and let me close this also okay all right okay saikaran you said i lost your audio uh, yeah saikaran what i was saying here is if you go back to the hello world controller you are annotating this particular method with your hello world okay if you are annotating with this hello world that means this particular method will be present as present in your context so that the moment you access with the moment you say hello world or htm as your uh, as your mapping it directly goes to your hello world okay it doesn't matter whether you have dot htm or not all right so we'll see the other variations also here in this case i'm annotating in your hello controller i'm annotating your controller as request mapping okay so i'm just saying any request with your welcome okay now if you go and see your index code.jsp i'm saying welcome.htm right one is your welcome.htm we'll see when we click on welcome uh, welcome what happens when we see when we click on the goodbye world uh, what happens all right so let me just copy this and just paste it in the browser now this we have seen this we have seen uh, by world hello world uh, welcome right so when you click on this it says a spring 3 mvc hello world go back here go back to the hello controller it says spring 3 mvc hello world right so automatically if you see it's kind of a mapping how it happens when you see simply say welcome.htm right that means any default method i am not even annotating this particular method with a particular request mapping okay if you see here this is been annotated with a value as goodbye but this has not been annotated with a value as default okay so this is our default method the way in your servlet you have got your service method as the default method the same thing out here in this particular controller i annotated the particular class okay there is a hello controller and on top of that i have got two methods one method is been annotated with your goodbye with the value is goodbye again this has been annotated as annotated as request mapping but there is no annotation for this okay so that means whenever you act, try to access saying something like welcome.htm okay it goes and hits this controller and automatically it goes and hits this particular method okay because this method does not have a value or a particular url mapping so by default this is my default method okay the other way out if you see there is one more uh, href that is your goodbye world okay so when i say click on the goodbye world it goes and hits your spring 3 mvc goodbye world okay so this is the complete flow i'm i'm not even having any sort of uh, configurations or anywhere in my uh, dispatcher servlet the only thing is i'm annotating all these things okay so you can even take up the approach to use annotations okay so either way you can use your configurations or you can use your annotations
All right, so it's all the same again. Uh, this acts as a controller. From your controller, you can take up the request and then you can basically do whatever you want to do along with it. Okay, all right, so let us see an application right now and try to understand the entire flow. There is one more application I'll just show you. And uh, it is all based on your uh, Spring MVC itself and we'll see how even we haven't seen anything on the JSP or anything on your HTML, right? So we, we just added this particular URL somewhere in this UI, if you see here. We just had a simple uh, HTML or a JSP in which I've got some hrefs and I'm clicking on that. I just wanted to show you what is the flow of your Spring MVC, okay? Now let us see something more on this uh, so that you better understand how the entire flow goes and whenever you try to submit a form, how those things happens as well. Okay, so we'll just go in depth right now. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, please stop me and uh, ask me. Okay, because this is uh, something you need to understand. Okay, so till now we have only spoken about the basic things, how the flow goes, all right? How the controller gets it and how do you go and land into a view page. Okay. Uh, Jaira. Yep. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I could not. Uh, like, uh, we are just learning about the MVC framework, and uh, this is uh, the index core. So, uh, I mean, uh, did you spoke about the annotations also? We just because spoke about I annotations now. Uh, could you please repeat it because I uh, somehow that password was not matching so I called H2K and I, I just I was just able to okay uh, yeah the, the next uh, concept which I am going to tell right now doesn't uh, need to deal with any kind of annotations okay so I would okay. request you please uh, go with the video okay because okay. all right Problem. so yeah. I mean the next topic is as such it is nothing nothing related to your annotation so don't worry all right I'll send you the video and you can just watch that. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, so let us close all these things. Uh, I hope, can anyone, uh, can everyone just give me a response saying uh, they have understood the flow, at least uh, the flow, how the flow uh, from your view to your controller to again to your view. Okay, great, okay. All right, so let us go and see in real time how what all things happens and how things works and whatnot. Let me go back to this and just say control C replace with Okay, I'm replacing it back. So you guys, if you want to toggle it, you can just use this annotations. Okay, in order to activate your annotation, you need to activate this. Okay, all the other things are not required. All right, so close this. So let me change this name to temp dispatcher. Okay, I don't need this anymore. I need this right now. Okay. Sorry. One sec, folks. Okay, yeah, there is one more mapping. The the mapping which we spoke about right now is your simple URL handler mapping. Okay, that means the moment you go to your index.ht, sorry, index index.js, the, the href what you have it out here, right? The, the value what you have it out here, you basically map it initially saying that, okay, this is my high htm and then you go and talk to the controller, right? So this is, there's a kind of a mapping here, right? So it says that, okay, this is high HTM. Somewhere in my HTML uh, or JSP, this is my high HTM, okay? And then I map this key with the value. Value is nothing but a controller. And then I go and talk to the controller here. I can even do a direct mapping also, okay? How do I do that? I can even use a mapping that is known as your bean name URL handler mapping, okay? Which is default i don't have to specify in this case as i need to use my simple url handler mapping okay i have to use these kind of approach okay but if i do not want to use this approach in specific i can directly map my key 
or map my hi.htm directly with a controller. How do I do that? I just, you need to use this. Okay, pretty much simple. Okay, so there is a bean name as high controller. Here you have it, but here you do not give us high controller. Instead, you give hi.htm itself. Okay, so this is known as your bean name URL handler mapping, okay, so which is by default. You don't have to specify anything as such. All right, so it's pretty much simple. You guys can uh, do this. So, but mostly in uh, real time applications, you will see these kind of mappings. Okay, that is, you'll be using a simple URL handler mapping all the time. Okay. All right, so coming back to this, close this. I don't need this. I need this MVC dispatches subreddit. Okay. So let me just rename this to MVC dispatches subreddit. All right, and then what I need to do, I just, I just wanted to show you another example. So in this case, I'll just say here as uh, MVC dispatcher servlet and MVC dispatcher servlet. Okay, because I have got two configurations, I just want to hit this configuration file. Okay, so ultimately what's going to happen, it is going to go and search for your MVC dispatcher servlet. So this is my MVC dispatch, MVC hyphen dispatch sublet dot XML file. Okay. Now here uh, I am basically uh, let's let's go and see this one by one and see understand and I'll just try to make you understand other things also. Right. Okay. So let me first run this application and uh, bring it up. I have to stop the server and bring it up again. Restart in debug mode. Okay, so clear, right click, run as, something went wrong, something is really getting crazy in my machine, okay, right click, run as, run on server. Let me just copy this and paste it somewhere in my browser. Okay, so this is pretty much simple, folks. Uh, there is no uh, logic behind it. I mean, I've just got a href here, and ultimately, I've got a customer.htm, and this is the name what you see it out here. Okay, the moment I click on this, obviously, it is going to go to somewhere in my configuration. I have got the customer.htm, right? So if I go back to my MVC dispatcher uh, servlet, I have something like customer. Okay, so let me go here. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, so you must be wondering right now what is basically happening. I mean, there is no uh, customer.htm here. Right, there is, okay, let me, I, I don't need this Fitbit XML, I'm just closing this, right? So you guys must be wondering right now, there uh, in, in my JSP, I've got customer.htm, but there is no trace of your, if you go back to the dispatcher servlet, there's no trace of your uh, simple handler URL, URL, URL mapping, and you do not have anything as uh, property key and value, correct? I do not have anything related to your simple URL handler mapping not even I'm using something like your the default that is your B name URL handle mapping, right? So if you see, I do not have anything as such or anything as such in my MVC dispatcher hyphen servlet, correct? Now, how it basically goes and hits a particular controller. I know that this is a controller which is getting hit, okay? So if you were to see that, I can show you that real quick. Uh, Customer controller Spring MVC tutorial controllers. Okay. 
So let me go here. Let me put some debug points. Okay, I think the debug point is not required. I have already put some SOPs out here. Okay. Uh, all right. So let me just show you that form backing object. Okay. All right. Now there are a couple of methods. You don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, I just wanted to show you that. Okay, it is hitting a couple of APIs in this particular controller, right? So the moment if I clear this up, okay, and then again go back to this, click on this, it it says if you see there is a output that is your form backing object and reference data, okay? So that is your form backing object and your reference data, all right? So these two method got invoked automatically. That means I am pretty much sure that this is coming to this particular controller, and this is even I have not annotated with any uh, any any uh, any class or in any any of the annotations. So you must be wondering what it is. Okay. Now if you go back and see this MVC dispatcher hyphen subred, the one which I am talking about right now, this I am doing a mapping depending on or uh, so on relying on something as controller class name handler mapping. Okay. Now what do you mean by controller class name handler mapping? If you go back and see your index mvc.jsp, what is the name of this? The name of this is customer. Okay, so the name of this particular href is customer. So automatically, what happens? It matches, it takes this name as customer, copy this, paste it here, changes the first name, uh, first letter to capital, and appends controller to it. Okay. So this is what it does basically when you use your controller class name handler mapping. Okay. So when you use that automatically it checks this and it goes and checks if there is a class accordingly to according. Okay. So there is already a class that is your customer controller. It goes and hits your customer controller. Okay. So there is no other logic behind this. The only thing is you have to use controller class name handler mapping. So wherever it sees any of the package, so you have to make sure that, okay, there is no other package with the same name. Otherwise it will, it will have a conflict. Okay. So again, this, these are all kind of utilities. I mean, uh, basically again, as I said, you will definitely go with using your simple URL handle mapping all the time. Okay. But these are all things which you only have, you have your single file as such, then you can use it, but you might end up uh, having multiple uh, controllers with the same name with the, uh, with different packages. I mean, it is possible anytime. Okay. So in that case, you'll be having a problem. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So coming back to your index mbc.jsp, the moment you clicked on this, what happened? Uh, ultimately your something got happened, right? So that this is my controller, which got invoked. Okay. Now in this particular flow, what happens is the moment you clicked on your uh, the moment your customer controller came into picture, okay, the very first thing what happened is, if I go, if I just open this, there is an on submit method, there is a form backing object, okay, and there is a reference data method. There is no written type saying which is my model, which is my view, nothing as such. Okay. Okay. This you have one. We haven't submitted submitted anything. This even doesn't come in picture as of now. Because if you see, there's no trace out here which says on submit. Okay. There is no trace out here which says on submit. That means this API did not even invoke. Okay. That means this event did not come in picture. But still, if I click on this, the moment I clicked on this customer, what happens is I'm I'm I mean, I mean, landing up in a page which is having some data in it. Some, it is basically a form. And I, when I click on this form, it will go and submit this form to the server back again. But how this form is coming up? Okay. So uh, it is, it is something like uh, when you go to a restaurant, the moment you uh, sit in a restaurant, they come up with. They, they serve you with some biscuits or maybe some water, right? So you don't have to ask anything for that. You, you don't have to ask the server uh, to the to the guy to serve you water or maybe if you if there are small kids, they will definitely come back uh, with some crayons and with some papers, right? Automatically they come with those things. The same thing out here, 
there is but there is a configuration right so when you go to the restaurant the uh, they know that okay you are going to eat something otherwise they will not even serve you that right so in order to do that in order to come up with this uh, process uh, so my, our objective is to understand how this page is coming into picture now what is this page also now in your uh, mbc dispatches servlet okay the f there is a property name known as form view and let us go back and open this form view so this is my form view.jsp okay in the form view.jsp i have got the username address password confirm password so the same thing out here username address password confirm password blah 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 so there are a lot of things out here okay now how this jsp page is coming in picture you don't understand that there is no configuration in the controller i am not returning anything nothing as such the only thing is you need to understand out here is that the moment you request your custom controller with for the first time okay because this is what we requested for the first time right the moment you clicked on this customer link it went to your customer.htm so the moment it went here the very first and foremost thing it will show you is your form view that is the first page whenever your controller is going to get invoked okay so ultimately it says property name equals to form view that is this is my and these are all keywords you cannot change these names okay so these are all keywords for us all right now this page came into picture for me right and we very well know that again in this case also we have to use uh, some view uh, some uh, view resolver and in this case i've used my internal resource view resolver it is also the same it basically goes and tries and finds the particular jsp right in this case this is a form customer form and where is my customer form present it should be present somewhere in my web inf slash views so somewhere here it is there right now customer form dot jsp so this is my suffix and this is my prefix okay this is pretty much easy we have already seen that yesterday now this came into picture first that's what we saw this okay even we did, uh, the moment we requested this controller the very first thing this came in picture so this is automatic i mean we just configured and this came in picture okay clear this again let me go back okay and i do not have anything here all right now uh, we'll see okay let me even click on this again now if you see this i say username colon jeram address with some uh, text area password with some some field here blah blah and favorite web framework as spring mvc struts 1 struts 2 jsf apache wicket okay sex male and female choose a number 1 2 3 4 5 6 and country blah 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 so from all, from where these data are coming so you must be thinking that okay in this html only we are doing all all kind of hard coding here okay so if you see here uh, somewhere we'll talk about favorite web frameworks so let us go and uh, scroll through your favorite web framework right now this is my favorite web framework but i am not doing any kind of hard coding in order to display all this information so from where all this informations are coming up for me okay the question is from where this informations are coming up for me right now what happens the moment this page gets loaded before even this page gets loaded there are a couple of methods which gets invoked okay let us go back to the customer controller okay so this is my method which gets invoked all right in this particular method i am taking up the request there is a request object okay i'm not even bothered about it right now i have got a customer a do in the customer do i have got all the related field which is required for a customer to be displayed now if you see all the fields are related to a customer right so username address password confirm password username address uh, password confirm password and a favorite framework so that means a customer being a customer i will be having all these properties obviously okay because we are only dealing with a customer right now okay because customer he uh, will be having username address password blah blah he will be even uh, belonging to a particular country also okay that means i need to create a particular object as a customer 
and have to have all the related properties which I see that in the form. Okay, that's all. Now go back to the controller. All right. Now I am saying that uh, the the default value for the customer. I'm just giving saying that customer dot set favorite framework as Spring MVC. Okay, that's what by default. If you if I refresh this page again, okay, by default your Spring MVC MVC has been chosen here. Okay, if I give it as JSF automatically the JSF will be chosen here. Okay, we'll see how this is bit getting chosen. Okay. Now the very first thing I have to give all the default functionalities, create a customer, set the default functionality, set female username as JRAM. For that reason, I'm seeing the value as JRAM here. Okay. And set uh, the Java skills as hibernate and set uh, secret value as I'm hidden value. So this has not been seen. Okay. And you basically return that particular customer. So that is what you written this object. Okay, and if you see, this is your the signature is your protected ob protected object form backing object, right? And the two this has been overridden, and you have to extend your particular controller to your simple form controller, right? Next step, reference data. Now, you have seen all these things, right? The very first thing is this method. You are creating an object, no doubt. After creating an object, what you're trying to do is you are basically creating all the details, okay? The one which you want to display in the UI. Now, this is the display part, but this is what you want to choose. That we got it from the reference, sorry, from the form backing object. In the form backing object, I create an object in the same object I return, okay? Now, what I do when I talk about the reference data, that means what is reference data? So you, uh, whenever you read some English book, you need a dictionary to for, for your own reference, right? So somewhere that dictionary comes automatically to, uh, to your desk. I mean, you keep the dictionary always so that you can refer things, right? Now you cannot, uh, the moment you read, uh, re let's say you're reading a page, right? You cannot uh, add all the dictionary, dictionary words to the page. So if you see here, if I go and talk to this, talk about this JSP, I'm not loading all these values automatically. So when I talk about favorite web framework, if you can see there is no trace of saying something like Spring MVC starts to JSF Apache, etc. Some anything as such. So from where I'm getting it. So that means if you see here, I'm creating a list. Okay, I'm creating a list saying that Spring MVC starts to starts starts one starts to JSF Apache and web framework and the same list. Okay, this is a list. I can add any name to it, okay? This object, so this is ultimately an object, right? So this object, I'm pushing it to a reference data. Now, what is the reference data? Reference data is nothing but a map and you already know that in your core Java, map is nothing but your key and a value. My key is nothing but your web framework list. Value is nothing but the list of your web framework, which you want to display. So ultimately what happens is you create some, uh, and if you see here, the reference data is a map. In that map, you put multiple key and values. So if you see, this is one key and value, this is one key and value, this is one more key and value, and this is one more key and value. So I'm using four key and value, okay? So that means I understand that uh, whenever I use my reference data, these are all callback methods. These gets called automatically, okay? Now, the very first time I invoked this, I got all this information, which is uh, which is already present in my reference data. Okay, this has been given it to the JSP. Now let us go back and see the JSP. Okay. Now, uh, I know, guys, you you might be having a lot of questions asking what are these things and so on. We'll we'll get uh, get to those things as well. Okay. All right. So here I'm saying uh, form checkboxes. Okay. So in your HTML, you have got uh, checkboxes, uh, but here we are not using the direct HTML tags. Instead, all uh, right, Cycron, it is, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go through it again, okay, Do, uh, no worries, all right? But again, it is very important to understand, okay? All right, now if you see here, so you see if you have uh, done your JSTL uh, properly, uh, the uh, standard tag libraries, which, which we have already spoken in your JSP, you have something like items, right? 
So if you haven't done this, I would request go back and do this, okay? Because if you don't understand that, it will be a bit tough for you to understand this, okay? Now I am basically saying form checkboxes items and I'm giving this web framework list. Now if you see here, what is the key to this? Reference data, okay? I'm returning, I'm creating a reference data that is of a tech kind map. In that I'm giving a key and a value. Value is nothing but a list. I'm access, I'll be accessing the entire information in the JSP using my key. Okay, that is what I'm using it here. Okay, and I'm just saying path equal to favorite framework. Now, what is my what is this path belongs to? The question is what this path belongs to. Okay, let us go back to the starting of the page. Okay, now if you see here, I'm saying form method equal to post that you will be anyhow seeing this. Action equals to customer.htm. This is how we have already seen that in case of a JSP servlets. Whenever you, you try to say form action, it go, you basically need to give you give the name of the controller, right? And the command name is your customer form. Okay. Now what is a customer form? Now if you go back to your controller, okay, you see something like in your constructor you have set a particular object which is going to be used as a transfer object between your JSP and your controller. Okay. So you are basically binding your customer form to a customer. Now what is this customer? You have all, we have already seen this. This customer is nothing but a complete POJO. It has got all the setters and getters. Okay. Now that is what I'm referring here. My command name that is my, that is my object basically in which I basically keep all this information. So we'll again walk through all these things. So just try to understand this. We'll again walk through again. Okay. Now, this is what I do. Okay, I just need to use the form column checkboxes. Now, if you see here, uh, I am basically using a tag library which says prefix form that is given by your Spring itself. Now, here you are using your entire Spring related tags. You are not at all using any other. Like if you do not say something like your form form action. Okay. You say something like form colon form. Okay, here you say uh, form colon input, form colon errors. We'll talk about this form colon text area. Okay, so you do not directly use uh, customer dot Java is not your uh, is it's not basically you say it is a, a model. Okay, you just say it is a form object. All right, you do not use it as a model basically. Okay. You basically use that as to transfer the data to and fro. Okay, we'll see that. All right now, all right. So uh, here, if you see, the moment you give the list to your form checkboxes items, automatically what it is going to do is it is going to render your. When you say render, that means it is going to iterate and it is going to print all the values what you see it here. Okay. All right, so the same thing goes for your male, female, and the number one, number two, number six, and blah, blah, blah. So all you see, you have to use radio button and you have to say uh, male, female. Okay, so this is a direct uh, value here. And apart from that, if you can see the number list, the number list uh, items of number list, and this number list again comes from your controller. Okay, so this is my number list. Okay, now let us go back and see one by one again. Okay. So the very first and foremost thing you have to understand here, the moment this page gets loaded, okay, you have to use your spring related tags here completely. Method equal to post, action equal to customer.htm. So till now we haven't submitted this form. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about this later. You're saying form input path equal to username, right? So I'll do one thing. I'll just right click on this and just say view page source. Expand this. Now come back here. Let us see one by one. If you see this username colon, but here I've got username colon the same here. After that, what happens? Input type equal to text, but I do not say something like input type equal to text, right? But I use something like form input. So what happens basically when you say form input that is which is given by your spring itself, it automatically renders 
that particular field to input type equal to text okay id equal to username it gives an id name equal to username value equals to jra okay so ultimately what happens your spring related tags gets converted to your html itself okay and that why how it is happening it is happening internally we don't have to take care of those things the only thing is we have to understand how to use this form input that means you basically if you use uh, direct uh, html tags you basically will copy this okay and just say something like this okay input type equal to text you give a name and you can even give an id also all right now path equal to username all right now what happens uh, if you see here let me just so okay the same thing goes for different tags also okay so you don't have to deal uh, with what internally it happens it, these are all uh, been rendered by your spring tag libraries itself okay so only thing is you have to understand how to use it now if you see my page how this jram is coming up in picture now if you see here i just told form input path equal to username now what happens is if you talk about your normal html also okay if this is my normal html page i can give a default value to a particular field also okay you you, you very well know that so if i say something like uh, test test and let me give this as test okay i just saved it go back here refresh this page okay so you can see a uh, test is coming up automatically right how it is happening because i'm giving a value as test here okay now the same thing when you say path username now where is what to which particular uh, command object this particular username is binded to now we are binding there is no sound uh keith are you having the same problem okay okay now all right now to which particular object now when you say path what you the very first and foremost thing what you have to say is what is the command name you are using so the command name is your customer form go back to your controller and check what is this you have got a set command name so this is your command name and what is the object you have binded to this customer form so this is what you have so this is a command name this is a command class open this and this is what you have it username okay so ultimately i know that whenever i'm using something like username as a path it automatically goes and gets binded to your customer's username okay now if you go back and see your controller in your controller what did you do is you created an object this is the same customer object and you said customer dot set username as jram so the moment you say customer dot set username as jram and you return that the it the moment it uh, tries to renders it checks is there any default value for this customer or not if there is a default value it takes this default value and sets that information in the jsp okay so this is how it comes if i comment this out if i comment this out okay and try to rebuild the application i think it is going to rebuild the application restart go back here go back to this please refresh this click on this now i think it is taking something from the cache okay i think i have to build this let me build it okay so build is done right click restart clear copy this paste it okay okay so let me just go back and uh, invoke our index mvc dot jsp Okay. 
and then just click on this. Now, if you see, there is no username here, right? How it is happening and why it is happening? We have already seen that right now, okay? As I'm not giving a default value to this object the moment you requested for this form. So which form? There is a customer form.jsv. So we know that your form backing object gets invoked and it tries to create an object. That means you want to give some default value to a particular rendering or to, to, to a particular command object in your JSP that is in your spring tags. Okay. So here in this case, as I'm using username, there is no default value as of now I'm getting a blank here. Okay. But if you see again, your spring MVC has been checked, your struts one is not checked and blah. How this has been checked as we have already seen in the controller, I'm giving a default value as spring MVC. If you again give one more value as a string array, that also will be checked automatically. Okay. Now folks, just to again tell you, uh, again remind you, we are talking about a framework. Okay. So when you talk about a framework, a lot of things are inbuilt. You just need to use those functionalities. Okay. That is what we are trying to do here. All right. Otherwise, what you have to do, you have to have some sort of logic. If you directly deal this in your JSP, you will have some sort of logic saying, okay, check this checkbox. You might use a JavaScript or you may, you might use uh, at the time you use a for loop. You can use a for loop also. You can use a JSTL tags also. The time when you render the uh, list, okay, you want to give, you want to see, okay, which one I need to check. Okay. So, but already we are having some sort of framework, which will automatically check the, those checkboxes or radio buttons or fill with some user data. Okay. So we are just trying to use those framework, right? Now, as we understood, this is kind of an object. Uh, this object uh, is being returned to the framework and depending on the default value, we get those information in the form JSP. Okay. Customer form dot JSP. All right. Now, again, coming back, this is your form. This is again given by your springs. Okay. Now we'll talk about this later. Okay. Now uh, let us try to give some information in the JSP. Okay. Now we are still in the first page itself. So I'll just say username, uh, blah, blah, password, seven, 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 seven. This is something select China. Okay. Now what are, what am I trying to do here? The moment I click on this, that means I'll be submitting this page. Okay. So here you have got click me. That is your input type able to submit. Okay. So form, I do not have anything as form submit. All right. So I just need to use the HTML tag itself here. Okay. Now there are a lot. I mean, if you see here, if I just say control space after column, there are a lot, many other uh, tags. You can still use it. We have used input type there. Are, we have used options, password, ready button, select. So these are the basic things which you can use it from your spring. Okay. Now, the moment I click on this, what what will basically happen is uh, input type equal to submit, right? So when you do a submit, ultimately, you know that you this form has got an action that is your customer.htm. So it goes to your customer.htm, right? That means again, it goes to your customer controller, which we have already seen in case that it takes your customer and it appends your controller to it. Okay. Now, at this point of time, it goes to your controller. So let us go and check your controller. Now, what are you trying to do in this page? You're trying to submit that page. Okay. Now, accordingly, if you remember in your servlets, whenever you'd say do get or do post, that means you are trying to say form action method equal to post or again, depending on that, that particular method gets invoked, right? The same thing here, the moment you submit your, any of your spring related pages, and if you have used a simple form controller, okay, there is a method that is our on submit. Okay, you have to override this method. That means you are trying to submit this page. The moment you submit this page, this particular method is going to be invoked automatically. That is your on submit method. Okay. See, it is not compulsory for me to override or to implement these things. Okay, this is not even compulsory. Okay. Depending on your requirement, my requirement is saying that, okay, by default, I want to show some information in the 
JSP. For that reason, you have overridden your reference data. Okay. The same thing. You you wanted to display some default values. For that reason, you have overridden this uh, form backing object, and then you are giving some information to it. Pretty much plain and simple. Okay. Now when it comes here, now see that we know that all the fields. JRAM, ASF, DAS, the password, the favorite web framework, all the fields are being mapped to the customer object. How did we see that? If you go back to the customer form.jsp, you have got path, you've got a path, you've got a path. We know that all these things, the path, address, username, confirm password, these things are been mapped to the customer form. Now, what is customer form? We have already seen it is nothing but here customer.java file. So automatically the moment I submit this page, the values, what all things I'm entering here, it goes to your customer form. Okay. That means the moment I click on this, it takes all the values from each and every field, maps those objects to the customer.java. Now I have got an object customer.java, sorry, customer object. Okay. The same customer object, I can access it in the on submit method. So it is very similar when you, uh, if you remember your JSP, from the JSP, if you want to access the data from your servlet, what is that I'm supposed to use? Can you guys type in please? What is that I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to use from your HTML? Okay. So. If I have my HTML, in the, in the HTML, I've got input type equal to text, okay? Uh, name equals to, uh, let's say, roll number. Can you guys type in what should I do in order to get the value of my roll number? Right, okay, I got one answer which says request dot get. I got, okay, it is slightly different, uh, Cycron, it is request dot get parameter okay that is all uh, that is how i'm supposed to do and i'm supposed to say roll number okay so this is my html this is my servlet right now if you see i'm not doing anything as such here because again i'm using a uh, i'm using a framework right now this framework says that the moment you click on this automatically as you are binding all these fields to a particular class okay these uh, informations will be present somewhere in your object. Now, if you see this on submit method, it even has your request. It even has a response also. You, even if you just uh, say request get parameter of a field, it even takes that. Okay. But again, you already have an object which has. Sorry, folks. Okay. You already have an object which has all those informations. Now, what you do as this is an object, you cast that object to a particular customer. Okay. And then if you just print this, you will just see all this information. I think I'm not. Two string method is there. Okay. Two string method is there. So you can see the moment I uh, click submit, the username and the country will be displayed in the console. Okay. So let me do that. Let me just clear up this one. Right click clear. Now let me just submit this. So I've got everything in place. So I've chosen everything and choose the number also and male, female, blah, 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 some, some things out here and just say, click me. Right? So the moment I clicked, what happens? Okay. So what happens? It again goes to some page. All right. Now I know the moment I clicked on this. Okay. It came to the on submit method. If you see in the logs, it came to the on submit method. There is, okay. Again, your form backing object is getting invoked. Okay. Let's not bother about it right now. Okay. So ultimate goal, your on submit method is getting invoked. And in the on submit method, you have a command object. You are casting that command object to a, cut, uh, to a customer class. And then you're just printing that. So the moment you print that, you say CS Jaram and China, because I'm just uh, overriding the two string method. In the two string method, I'm returning just the this information. Okay. And then ultimately what at last what I'm doing is I'm just saying return new model and view. Okay. So what is my model? Uh, this is my model customer information and this is my view. All right. Now copy this customer success.jsp. 
Now, what is that I'm pushing in the model? I'm pushing in the model that is your customer information, that is your customer object, basically. And you know that how to get the information from a customer if it is a key. This is my key. So when we spoke about your JSTL, you just say customer.username, customer.address, password, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And if we even see, if we have already seen uh, how to use your for loop in case of a JSTL, you basically give the customer uh, favorite frameworks, okay, which will basically iterate through all the frameworks. So if 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 in case I have just uh, only chosen Spring MVC, if I would have chosen, uh, let's say, number this one i'll choose multiple things here okay so i just click right if you see here i'm getting spring mvc struts one and struts two. how i'm getting as uh it this is a list and i'm passing this this favorite framework is a list i'm passing this to a for each again okay? ultimately i'm printing it using your c out all right so this is again completely jstl tags okay so for that reason folks uh, when i started my jstl classes i i told you multiple times please practice JSTL, it is very important, okay? So this is my uh, ultimate page wherein I am showing my result, okay? So this is a complete uh, structure of your model, uh, which is my view model I can create it from anywhere, right? I mean, I can, I can uh, basically uh, have this I, I, in the form backing object or suppose in the, in the reference data, here I can go and talk to the database and uh, I can get all this information from the database. If this information is present in the database, I will pick up these informations and give it to the reference data. Ultimately, I can render that in the UI. Okay. And here, if you can see the moment I submitted, it went to the on submit method. On submit method, uh, it has already the details about the object because we are already binding all the key, uh, I mean, all the properties of a particular field to a customer form. Okay. Now, Let me again go back to the page here, right? Uh, I will give some address. I will give some password. Choose this, choose this, choose this, choose this, choose this, okay? I've chosen everything. The only thing is I have not chosen the user. I'm, and I have not given any information in the username. I'm doing a click me. Now, the moment I say click me, what happens? Some sort of validation is happening and it says username is required. Okay, even if I just blank this out, click on this, it says username is required, address is required, password is required, confirm password is required because I have not chosen any of this information. How it is happening? Okay, you, you see all this information is out here as well as out here also. Okay, now again in the framework, okay, uh, if you see here for each form input path, username, there is another tag in your uh, form that is your errors, path equal to the same name, CSS class equals to error, okay? This is again, uh, it all uh, it is all your CSS, what you build up out here, okay? How you want to display your information. Now, how these informations are coming? By default, if you, the very first time, if you see the page, you will be not having anything as error. Automatically, the moment you submit this, some sort of validation happens. Now, let us see what is that validation. Okay. If you go back to the, your MVC dispatcher hyphen server.xml, if you see, I am, apart from giving a property that is your form view, okay, I am giving there is one more property that is your, one sec, folks. Okay, I'm giving one more property which is which says your validator property name equal to validator, and this is nothing but your customer validator. Okay, now let me just open that. What is customer validator? This is a class which again is in your framework itself, which implements your validator frame, uh, interface. Okay, and here you're just saying uh, it supports class. There's there's a method you just need to use it. Okay, and let us see this important thing. Right now, what happens the moment you submit a page before even going to your controller? That means before even hitting your on submit method, what it is going to do is it is going to first go to your validator. It is if you remember your filtering concept, the very first thing is it goes to a filter. Right from once your filter is done, then only it passes. It changes the request to your server. Right. So 
the same concept here same kind of concept. it's not the same concept same same kind of concept you basically take you you say you use a validation util now if you see here this validation util is again from your spring framework itself you just say validation util dot reject if empty or white space there is already an inbuilt method you can use it and take this you you check the username okay and if you see there is a property uh, required dot uh, username field name is required all right so let us go back and see what is this properties customer properties okay uh, it says required dot username required dot username okay now if you see username is required right now what basically happens is in your customer validator you are giving a key here okay and a value if this key is not present in your properties file so when i say this is a property file for me which is having the key and value okay now how this property file is getting loaded if you go back again to the dispatcher we have got something like your message source resource bundle okay we have already seen that in case of a core, core spring core how to load a properties file and this you are giving the base name as customer com tutorial customer properties customer so this property also will be loaded the moment you moment you run your servers okay now this is already present uh, in the in the, uh, in the container itself somewhere and the moment you uh, the, the validator checks this it checks for the username whether the username is blank or white space it checks if okay i know it is a white space so it has to give some message so the moment it checks for this uh, key it first goes and checks the key in the properties if it is not there then it will throw this default message as of now we have this information in the properties file itself so it will very well go and pick up this value and throw that value to the output okay if you see there is there are a lot of validations out here even if you see there is a confirm password and confirm password uh, check also in, in this case i'm just checking if it is there is something wrong i am going to reject that value also now what is the target if you see here the target which we are getting is nothing but your object okay your your complete command uh, command object out here okay i am doing some functionalities out here because I'm, i just wanted to get the uh, username and password and what not okay and then i'm 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 just saying get password and get confirm password here for that reason i wanted to have this logic and i'm depending on that i'm just putting some error messages okay now if you see uh, automatically um, it checks for all the information and then it it pushes all the all the details to the framework itself okay so you you're pushing all this information to the framework automatically even before if there is any issues with your validation right it directly even with, without even going to the controller it again comes back to the jsp that is your customer form dot jsp and it populates all these values okay and this is your form colon errors when you say path star it takes care of all the error information so if i remove this and go back here okay so when i click on this you do not see on the top right now you just see on the field level but if you want to see all the information at one shot in one place you can very well have this form colon errors path equals to star CSS uh, class, whatever. I mean, this is my predefined CSS classes. Okay, so the ultimate goal to understand here is your command name. What command name you are giving? How this has been mapped? You can even map this from your uh, Spring configurations itself. But here, I have taken an approach to map it from the controller itself. Okay. So that means I'll be having a property known as command class command name. I can set all these informations in the property here itself. Okay. Uh, on the flow, is there anyone who has some sort of confusion? I, I know there'll be a lot of confusion here, but again, any questions on top of it? Any questions, folks, from anyone? Or is it, is it pretty much clear? Or is it partially clear? Okay. All right. 
Ajit say it's not right now. Okay. Yeah, obviously. Uh, okay. So, but at least if you understand uh, the, if you try to understand uh, some bits and pieces, like for example, again, if I want to reiterate. So here, as of now, we have used your uh, controller class name uh, handler mapping. You can use other mappings also. Okay. Apart from that, you have to understand this. Okay. So this is a starting page which gets invoked automatically. This is a success view also. Okay. Uh, and on top of that, we have got a validator. This is pretty much uh, understandable. Okay. There is a validator. You have got a properties file. You load the properties file using this and this we have already seen it. Okay. But only one thing which you need to understand is how you are setting how you're setting your command name. This you can even do it from your spring itself. Okay. I can just set all this information with saying property name equal to command name, command class. I can give those informations out here also. Okay. But I've taken an approach to push it here. Right. And then the moment you load a page, your form backing object as well as your reference data gets invoked. The moment you submit a page, your on submit method is going to get invoked. So there are three methods, three important methods to understand. The moment first you request a page, you request a controller, your form backing object and your re reference data is going to get invoked. But second from second time, your form backing object and your on submit method is going to get invoked. Okay. And again, uh, you're just saying return model and view here. All right. And in your JSP, for each path, this path are being binded to a customer form. Now, what is this customer form? We have already seen that in the controller. This is the class object. Okay. So what you do basically is you pass on those, pass on the information. Okay. So you pass on this. This is a JSP. You already have an object that is a, your complete com, uh, customer object is present and it got a lot of properties. You pass the entire, okay. You pass this entire object to the controller. Okay. If this is a controller, you pass the entire information to the controller in the form of a command object. Now what this controller does, it picks up all this information and does, a, it does its processing. Okay. And then in the controller, you have got uh, on submit method, you have got uh, form backing and the reference data methods, which gets automatically invoked. Uh, Saikiran asks, when creating a real time web application, do we need to use class name controller? No. Okay. Again, Saikiran, it all depends on you. Okay. So uh, I, I cannot put you some on, on some sort of restriction to just use your class name controller or to uh, now you're talking about class name controller. Are you talking about your controller class name handler mapping, Saikiran? Or okay, yeah, it all depends again. Okay, you can even use this. See, in the uh, when somebody has given you this functionality, you can use it, right? So in the real time, basically everybody goes with your uh, simple URL handler mapping itself. Okay, but no one is restricting you not to use this. Okay. But the only problem is if you re uh, check this real time also, I might have one more class with the same name also, right? It may be it is not uh, in your con in your customer. Uh, it might be, let's say your uh, Wipro, Wipro employee. So sorry, your anything, uh, ex uh, let's say a Wipro customer. So I can even have a controller as customer controller, right? So no one is stopping me to do that. So it's very well uh, from the starting itself, you either use, I mean, you always use your simple URL handle mapping itself. Okay. No doubt it is pretty much lengthy. You have to, uh, okay. Now, nowadays even annotation has come up. You can even use annotations also, but easier and more reliable is your simple URL handle mapping itself. Okay. Which one is mostly used? Uh, uh, in my application, I have used uh, both simple URL handle mapping as well as we have used annotations also. Okay, they uh, we have even used annotations in order to not to do all these configurations also. Okay, but we have to be very much careful when we use annotations. No two class should have the same annotations. So those things, if you keep in mind, you can very well use annotations as well. Can we use both simple URL handle mapping and controller class? Uh, yes, we can still use both. If suppose 
uh, you have you want to use both. I mean, suppose your application have already used your simple URL handler mapping, and then on top of that, you have changed your mind to use your controller class name handler mapping. Okay, so you you still have an option to use it. All right. Okay. Uh, any more questions on the flow, folks? If there are no questions, okay, Ajit says no. So that means Ajit is pretty much clear. Great, Ajit. Okay. All right. So I'm going to check in. The, I think, uh, yeah, already, already this file has been checked. Uh, Jaira? Yes, Madhu. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, actually, I'm behind a couple of classes. Uh, and, uh, okay. The Friday class, I am really missing it. Ah, uh, okay. So, what can we do about it? Do we have any previous uh, um, sessions or something? Like no, fr that? it's see, Friday class is nothing to do with this. Okay. Right. So, if right. you understand right. your uh, previous classes also, uh, let's say right. Thursday or Wednesday classes, and jump onto this, you can easily understand things. Okay. So, uh, if I jump, I mean, uh, from Thursday to Monday, it should be okay. Monday to Thursday, yes. Just I mean, read last Thursday class to Monday class. Yeah. yeah, Monday to Thursday and then yesterday's class also. You should be good. Okay, got right. you. Thank you. All right, folks. Uh, if there are no questions, uh, take your time. Don't take your time, but uh, do it seriously and uh, come up with some questions and then we can discuss. Uh, Madhu, no, we will not cover swings here. Swings is again a, a vast topic, okay? I can give you a couple of applications which I've developed on swings, but uh, we are not covering swings here. Right? All right, folks, if there are no questions, uh, one sec. Okay, all right, folks, uh, we can just wind up. Uh, I was just looking out for the feed feedback form, but again, I think again, I have lost. Okay, thank you guys and uh, have, a, uh, have a good night and talk to you tomorrow. And tomorrow we will be talking about uh, Hibernate, so be well prepared. Uh, Keith, once we finish this Hibernate, we'll talk about web services. So uh, Hibernate, it'll hardly take uh, five classes and then we'll jump on to web services, okay? I know you're desperate uh, to understand uh, web services. I appreciate that, but uh, it's in the flow, so I don't want to break the flow. Okay, sorry for that as well. <laughs>